Hi everybody and welcome to our webinar for this week, uh, Professional Beauty and Heritage Journal Ireland webinar. And uh, this week we are joined by Leah Chung, who I just had to check with her because I pronounced <laughs> her name right. And uh, thank you very much for joining us this week, Leah. And uh, Leah is the owner of Leah Chung Lash Artistry in Wexford, is that correct? Yes, that's right. It's very original, you know, my name and then the business is like, yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we're just we're going to talk today about um, lash artistry as a business and I like the way mm -hmm. you put artistry into the whole thing so um, maybe just to start off if you want to talk us through your own career path and lash journey. <laughs> okay so basically I think I was about 18 and I had finished school and I knew I didn't want to go to college I just I didn't I didn't really know what I wanted to do kind of that was really it so I said I'd apply for a job uh, as a receptionist in this beauty salon and I was like okay deadly got the job happy days and then I was a receptionist uh, for a little while and then my boss at the time she had asked me would you like to do would you like to do lashes would you like to do something else other than being a receptionist as well and I was like oh okay that'd be that'd be deadly you know and that because my auntie she is a lash artist as well so I was getting lashes from the age of 16 you know going into school and people were like what are those and I'm like <laughs> you know so I just felt like Woo! but uh yeah so I went to uh do a course and it was a classic lash course absolutely loved it and then after I think maybe I think it was maybe about two or three months I went and did a volume course um up in Maynooth with the glamour lashes and then after that I just was thrown into the deep end so I I, I learn better when I'm thrown into the deep end and I actually have to learn so we literally just threw me into the deep end and I was doing lashes I think I think at the time they were they were just starting to get a little bit more recognized because even still to this day there's a lot of people that have never gotten lashes before and they don't even know what they are and uh, I think that that was that was just crazy like it's still crazy that they're still being basically noticed so back then it was kind of just starting to get a little bit more busier with the lashes so I was booked for I think maybe three weeks in advance and I think that really helped me because I had to you know get quicker on my timings I had to actually learn and I had to actually make sure I was doing them right and so I was then doing that for in that salon for about maybe a year or so and then I decided I wanted I wanted to change the scenery so I went to another salon in Greystones and then I worked up in Dublin for a little while uh, in the same oh, right. business and it was always oh, that was great fun I loved working up in Dublin it was just such a great uh, great place and then I think after I want to say maybe 10 months I had decided <laughs> random I wanted to do personal training <laughs> So I went and I did personal training. I did a personal training course, but I was still doing my lashes on the side. And then I just decided last year, I'm going to open up my own business. And that was literally it. I just took the, took the leap. I asked my auntie for like any advice. And then I got, cause my, um, I, I'm in a, a women's group and it's called a women's inspire network. And I just think it's it, basically what it is, is. There's loads of women and they're all from different areas of business. So if I needed someone for accounting, I just put into the group anyone do accounting and then so it was, it was handy I learned a lot from from that group um and then after that I just set up my business and uh yeah here we are I'm I got my teacher training qualification I'm doing my online courses doing my face-to-face -face courses and I feel like the lockdown really really helped me grow and really just helped me learn a lot about myself and learn a lot about my business and what I maybe needed to like get better at and what I needed to actually fix in my business so I think that the lockdown really helped me in that regard so yeah that's kind of that's kind of my journey I have my own brand of products now as well and it's just really fun so it's deadly okay and um you're you know you're very specific about like saying you know you're a lash artist so yeah. do you do you equate doing lashes with art and being creative and like for anybody that's looking to get into it do you think that's important I do. I really do. Because I use the word lash technician and you hear the word nail technician, lash technician. And I feel like we need to be a bit more like proud of ourselves. We are an artist. It's a form of art. Like being a nail artist, you're literally doing art every single day. You're creating such a beautiful product. And it's the same with lashes. I think that the word technician needs to be upgraded then to artists because it's just yeah. a form of art you know and I love the whole creative side of it and every single person is different and I've been doing lashes for about three years but I'm still loving my job every single day and I'm just loving creating something 
new for someone and making them feel happy. So I think the word artist is really important that uh, we all should start realizing that we are artists and whatever. Yeah, I think the word technician as well, it's almost like there's something slightly medical about it. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> not for, it's just not very attractive. No. Um, no. Yeah. And then just, um, I suppose, in, you know, in terms of trends, are you seeing, you know, a lot of different trends, it's depending on age group, but like, what are you seeing most in demand from your clients at the moment? So there is the, I, I feel that the L curl will be coming really, really, will become really, really popular. The L curl is literally, it's in the shape of an L. It's kind of, a, sometimes they can be a little bit slanty at the top. So it's literally a straight line and then a curve upward. So instead of it being that swooping motion of a lash, it's a line yeah. up. It's gorgeous. And that is brilliant for a cat eye effect. I just think like when I first seen it, I was like, what is this? <laughs> How am I going to use this? But it's whatever way you angle the lash creates that gorgeous flick and it really denses along the lash line. And it's something that is, it, it does kind of need to be uh, worked with and you really do need to kind of concentrate on the angles of it. And I'm still learning with the L curl, but I think that is going to be the one curl that is going to really, really dominate. That and the M curl. The M curl is a lot more kind of, um, how do I describe it? It's, it's similar to the L curl, except it just goes a little bit more, uh, instead of it being that, that kind of right angle, like it just goes straight like the L curl. The, the M curl is a little bit more of a roundier uh, kind of edge here before it flicks up. So it's gorgeous as well. I think that a lot more people are going to be experimenting with those ones uh, a lot more. And I also feel that pre-made fans are actually improving so much more. So say, for instance, a lot of artists um, like myself would do would create the lash fan for the volume sets. But, mm -hmm. you know, you can buy pre-made fans. And I think pre-made's got a really, really bad name years ago because when you got them they were really like blunt and square at the bottom of it instead of it being really nice and slim and tapered do you know so I think that the, the pre-mades are going to be a lot more popular in 2021 to help you with your sets and because when you get a good pre-made um, I've tried out a couple of them but when you get a really good one it just creates that really really nice fluffy neat set and I actually I actually think it's I actually start using them a little bit more now because I'm like oh this it's actually really nice and then I'll, I'll practice then uh kind of mixing it in with my with my own fans that I make like I love making my own fans but if you're wanting to do a mega volume set um you can use either 0 0.05 millimeters or 0 0.03 for your mega volume but if I'm doing my mega volume I'll use 0 0.03 millimeters and that like you can get like 10 or 15 lashes onto one lash but that sounds scary but when you when you actually look at the lash it's so so thin that that's what it's creating that real fluffy look and you can get so much more lashes so I definitely think pre-mades are going to be something that are going to be a lot more popular because they're getting so much more uh what's the word they're just improving basically the the make of them so yeah I think those would be the trends and the cat eye effect will definitely come back in again it always comes and goes like cat eye is always popular but I think that the cat eye will really just dominate in 2021 because a lot more people are realizing they love that liner effect that dark kind of dense uh lash line and liner effect so I think those would be the next trends and do you think um you know I suppose it's something we've all touched on at this point you know like uh the way we're all having to wear fa face masks and yeah. there's a little bit more focus on the eyes now and I know that I've spoken you know to somebody about like you know yeah. people are more um, interested in their brows now do you think the same with the lashes because mm -hmm. you know you can't really I mean you can of course you can wear lipstick and whatever mm. but when you have to put a face mask over It'll it go everywhere yeah <laughs> yeah so it's like you're you're more into kind of like dolling up mm -hmm. the upper part of your face so are you seeing yeah. a little bit of a, an increase uh, an increase in business because of that do you think definitely I really really do believe that um it's so true because a lot I see a lot more ladies getting the brow lamination as well and then they're getting the lashes as 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 well as the I don't do the brow lamination but they're getting the lash extensions or the lash lift and I just think it really like when you I think the eyes are like the the key to the soul of everyone you know and yeah once you have a, like your, your gorgeous set of eyes like you're looking literally only at the top or the top or half the top half of your head so I think that when a woman feels really empowered from the top half and she gets her hair done her brows done and her lashes I just think she feels powerful and then she can really you can really you can really just understand someone by their eyes and like that's why I love doing um lashes because um I'd be really into spirituality and I just I absolutely think that the eyes are such 
a key and an open an open door to the soul it's just it's yeah I definitely think it's a big increase okay and you know the way um like there's different I suppose somebody had mentioned to me before you know that like certain lashes aren't going to suit a certain age group so mm -hmm. like what are the different options available when you're going across like you know say compared to a younger woman compared to like a middle-aged woman you know do you do you tailor to the age yeah so with the younger generation um they wouldn't have a lot of wrinkles or a lot of a lot of the time sometimes the the hood can actually just droop down a little bit and that happens with age anyway yeah. so i find that if someone comes in and i had a lady actually the other day and she had a really prominent kind of hood on her on her uh was it her right eye her right eye and it just drooped just below where the brow um arch was so it was just long here and what i did was i used a different curl in that specific area to just give that eye a lift so i used the d curl and then the other ones i used a cc curl which uh, the cc would be like just like slightly less than a d so it kind of just tailors to her eye shape and wherever the hood is most prominent you want to lift where that area is so for a young person let's say for instance someone has downturned eyes and the uh, the outer corners are a bit downturned you wouldn't do a cat eye effect because that's just going to make it really more downturned you'd put like a squirrel or a doll effect if you like and a squirrel is where the arch of the brow would be most pro prominent so where your arch is you would put the longest length going towards the arch and that is going to lift up that eye instead of making it more drooped and i think with the older generation they I, I find that a lot of them are really worried about the, the the wrinkles and the and the droop of their eye but like it's totally normal all you have to do is just change the curl and it's as simple as that so I think that I had another the lady that I had the other day she was just shocked because she'd never gotten lashes done before and she was so shocked that lashes were, were able to lift her eye and she was so happy and she sent me a message then saying how much she loved her lashes and I was just like oh that's so nice so it's just it was so nice to see that and definitely with the younger generation um, a lot of them do love that big glam look so you know I would you know try to deliver as best I can and make sure I'm being realistic and not being damaging to their natural lash either um but a lot of them are just lovely they understand that and uh yeah so definitely there is a difference between the younger and the and the older generation but uh, it just depends on where your eye is most kind of drooped or hooded and that's all it is yeah and, and people have different um i guess types of lashes yeah. as well do they like yeah. some people obviously were you know blessed with gorgeous <laughs> natural <laughs> curly lashes and then other oh, people yeah not not so much you know yeah yeah oh definitely I, I find that if someone has oh these beautiful thick curly natural lashes and they have like a natural curl to them what I would do is I would do a uh, if I'm applying the lashes I would do a curl less so instead of saying doing a d curl which would be really curly which would be great for someone who has straight lashes or you know kind of pointing down lashes if they have curly lashes and you use a D curl, it's going to literally hit off their eyebrow. You know, you'd, you're just going to curl back. It's going to be too curly. So yeah. you have to kind of just assess in that in that sense. Um, but say, for instance, uh, ladies with Asian eyes, um, obviously they have that monolid, so they don't have a lot of the eyelid. So in that regard, you can use an L curl, which will, if you use a, a D, D curl, which is really, really curly, that would wrap on their hood. And sometimes that can feel a little bit uncomfortable if their hood is a little bit uh, kind of drooped a little bit more or you have deep set eyes and they have that real prominent hood. You wouldn't necessarily, well, I mean, I wouldn't, sorry, I wouldn't necessarily use a really curly curl because it would just hug too much of the hood. Um, so I would use an L curl, which kind of comes out and then goes up. So you're not even going to touch that hood. Um, so it just depends. Like it's a lot of trial and error at the start for me, for sure. And then after a while, it, I literally just kind of was like, okay, this is not going to suit that person. We have to try something else, you know? And um, that's all it is. And then they can obviously keep in contact with you if they're not happy with anything. They can come back to you. I always keep that communication lines open as well. Okay. And how then do you manage um, your time and your client list? to you know obviously at the end of the day you're running a business so you do need mm. to maximize profit <laughs> but you know for example are there some treatments you know that are more time consuming than others and how do you balance say like when you're looking at your client like obviously now I know you said to me that you know for December you were just chocker block like all salons all over yeah, the country. Yeah. you know how do you you know do you try to figure out like okay this is going to take longer than the next person and do you try to balance that out a little bit so that you're not 
spending, I suppose, all your time doing the really long drawn out treatment. Mm -hmm. so um for december obviously we're in lockdown so everyone who comes to me with it they would have had to get a full set because it was obviously six weeks since their last set um and i usually make people come in for refills every three to four weeks just to keep up with their health um and then at that stage they should have at least 30 to 40 percent of their extensions left because if they have less then it'll be a full set um but for december it was a lot of the full sets basically throughout December to be honest with you and the only time I have the refills is, is actually Christmas week so um I just found I found that this time it was a little bit harder to manage my time because obviously the I take about two hours or or two hours and 15 for the for the fuller fuller sets um mm -hmm. and I think that I think a good tip is to when you're opening a business think about your prices of, like just know what your prices are going to be and have them in your head and make sure you're being good to yourself as well because we've all done that we've all been like oh it's fine don't worry five euros fine for two hours yeah. work. you know so definitely having your prices if you're starting a business like very soon have your prices in your head and just know that if you're happy with this like this is your time sort out your products sort out how much everything's going to cost your overheads so that's that's really important but even in regard to december for me I think, see, I charge from uh, 70 to 105 for volume sets, obviously going from lighter volume to mega volume. Um, and I'm personally happy with my sets, but you know, December, if you're a business owner, you're gonna be working like <laughs> like crazy as well. So you're gonna be like, oh, sure, 12 hours shift, it's fine. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it was just kind of, for December, I had to fit in a lot of my regulars first. And then I actually hired my first employee um, on the 1st of December. So she was taking, the other clients that maybe weren't really my regulars um, yeah. during the lockdown. So um, I wanted to look after my regulars first, which is really important to me as well. Um, and then for December week, I have a, a, a slot of an hour for refills or an hour and 15 or an hour and a half, depending on how many natural lashes the person has. And I think that a lot of it is like when you do your first set of that person, you'll be able to get an idea of how many natural lashes they will have. So then you'd be able to allocate then if you need extra like five minutes or if you need an extra 10 minutes for your sets or your refills. So um, it, it is just trial and error, I find for the first while. Um, but I was lucky that I started, you know, last year. So then I can kind of get an idea of what December would be like. OK. And in terms of upselling, I always ask people that, you know, is it is, you know, that that whole area of lash treatments, is it a good area for upselling, you know, like retail products or you know that, that kind of thing to sort of I suppose make your business even more profitable mm -hmm. yeah so um I'm bringing in my own uh cleanser so which anyone can do if they have a if, a if they have a lash business bringing in your own lash cleanser because that is going to help with the aftercare of their lashes which is super important um I sell a lash cleansing kit just that I made up from different kind of businesses um just to combine it into one uh and then you can also do lash masks which are great for when you're sleeping because they're a blackout lash mask and they actually they're like a little bra for your for your eyes so they're raised <laughs> it's, it's hilarious they're raised at the eye area so they're not actually touching like a traditional yeah. lash eye mask then there's also a lash serum which you can get which is great because if you're say wanting your clients to take a little break i make them take a break every like three to four sets um depending on how strong their natural lashes are and you know you'd recommend a lash serum to grow their lashes for when like to make them all nice and healthy for when they come in for their next set um, in like two weeks or a month's time um and then what else you could get um uh oh what's that called it's like you could also do magnetic lashes if they wanted to just take a break from the extensions you can sell them yeah. the magnetic lashes which are very cool or the liner magnetic lashes which is with the kind of the eyeliner um and uh yeah i think my my most my most profitable one is definitely the lash cleansing kit and the uh, lash masks because if you're sleeping at night time you're kind of rolling all over the bed and your face is buried into the pillow the lash mask is great because you can tighten it or you can loosen it and it just protects your lashes so it's definitely there's definitely um, a market there for for that and then also you could get a lash lift as well so if they want to take a break from their lash extensions you can be like well do you want a lash lift because the lash lift will last them a, a couple of weeks anyway and then they can try that out and then they'll be like oh maybe yeah I love it and then they'll want to go back to the extensions they have the choice then as well so there's always a choice in the salon okay so lots of different ways that uh, yeah. you can you can um, sell different types of products mm -hmm. and then you know having a lash offering in general do you think that that's 
you know, one of those services that's good for client loyalty and getting repeat customers. I know you spoke there about regular customers because, mm. you know, I, they all, you know, we know that like one of the, the main parts of like running a good business is making sure that people are coming back yeah. for more. So do you yeah. think that that service is one of those areas that's quite good for, because once they find, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, do you think that once a client finds a good lash artist that they'll stick with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do believe that. Um, I do believe that. Um, actually, I had a lady there the other day and she didn't like another place that she went to because they weren't taking COVID seriously, let's say. Uh, that's what she said because there was no signs and then I was like oh gee I was kind of like worried I was like oh my god is everything it's set here is everything fine and she was like no just the fact that you had the sign on the door because I have a sign saying sanitize your hands and I have a couple yeah. of signs in the salon but that was like a big difference to her actually wanting to choose me then and I was like wow so um but in regards to getting repeat clients I have a course. So what it is, it's a course of three refills. And basically, say for instance, my refills are 50 euro each time for a two to three D or four D. So that's 50 euro three times, that's 150. I offer the course of three, which they have to pay in full and they have to book in each of their next three appointments and I chat and it's only 135 euro. So that okay. way I say to them, you're saving 15 euro, but then at the same time, I know that they're coming back and I know that they've paid. They have yeah. to come full for the first one. So that's a really good idea, I find, um, for that one. So they can come every, uh, it's, it's, it has to be, though, every three to four weeks. Otherwise, it won't it won't be class. Um, now, I do, like, say, for instance, they only book in the two of them and they want to get a removal uh, and just relax. And then they'll, in a couple of weeks, they'll get a full set. They still have that one, you know, um, as long as they're making sure that they are coming for the refills and then obviously taking a break or just getting a fresh set. Um, but that's a really good one, uh, the offers. And then I uh, sometimes I would do like an offer of um, of a cheaper set if I'm having a really quiet month. So I'll just put up online. Uh, 15 euro off a full set of two to three d volume and then everyone's like oh, yeah 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 yeah." because even when I did the introductory offer for Caitlin to get her kind of basically knowing how to handle the tweezers and get more comfortable with everything I did an introductory offer and it was 20 euro off and from the first week she was actually booked up then until Christmas so well Christmas Eve okay. so that was just it was really good confidence boost for her to know that she's getting all those clients and obviously I did increase the times for her a little bit so that she could not feel like she's under pressure but definitely um an offer is good but just make sure that you're not underselling yourself and make sure that you're actually make sure you're looking after yourself as well that's all yeah somebody um that I was interviewing there a few weeks ago actually two different people said that made that point that you know um always you know just don't do the the, the cheap offers because it just no, doesn't work no. it never works out in the end no. it's like you lose the client loses it's like yeah. it's just not worth it and it's and something it's in our minds yeah it's something in our minds where like if we see something really expensive we're like i want that i want that now you know like it's just it's something to do with our minds <laughs> yeah and it's just like it's about putting value as well on your offering do you know mm -hmm. what i mean rather yeah. than as you said underselling yourself it's like believe in what you're offering exactly know that you're the best much, that much money yeah exactly. um and then just i suppose i wanted to ask you about in terms of starting up your own business now i know you touched briefly on what did you say the name of that organization is again inspire women oh, uh, women's inspire network there's about 400 members in it it's absolutely brilliant because like there is a person for every single different type of job it's only like 20 euro a month or 25 euro a month and you can quit at any time but it's brilliant because what it is is say you wanted your uh your i don't know your flyers creative created and you had no idea what you wanted to have as a design there's someone in that group that is going to be like i can help you or you want advertising i can help you there is just brilliant it is brilliant it's very good okay and that's national is it all over the country yeah. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's on Facebook and it's on um it's, it's a big group and like she hosts conferences every year. Yeah, um, and it's brilliant. It's very good. Yeah. Now I've come across it on Twitter. I just um was, oh, go away. <laughs> was it national or what? Um. So yeah, and I wanted to just to ask you about you know like so starting up your own business like you did. You know, you, you basically started from scratch. You know, what do, would you have any like good marketing tips? I would say make sure you take really good photos because your photos, if you're a lash artist or a nail artist or anything, your photos speak 
everything like they just say everything about you they say everything about what like what you like what you think is perfection for you and just get make sure you're getting really good photos and get a good phone or a good camera just to really highlight this and make sure that um if you're if you're starting up that uh you have a good instagram page and that you have all your handles like your twitter ready your facebook ready your website website for sure because I think that if I'm trying to look for some place and they don't have a website, I'm, I, I feel, me personally, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so if you have a really good website, I think it just, it does show that you're serious. <laughs> you know, you're serious about your business. Um, and it does take a long time. You know this, everyone knows this. It does take a long time, but once you do it and you just knuckle down and just focus, you're, you're going to be so well off then in the end. So definitely. And do you think, you know, like the way you said, like Facebook, Instagram, do you think it's better to, you know, and I've asked people this before, you know, the way they say that, like, don't stretch yourself across every yeah. single social media platform, yeah. Yeah. pick your, your platforms and then make sure that they're, you know, constantly up there because there's nothing worse either than landing on somebody's Facebook page and seeing that, you know, the last post they put up was 2014. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, inspire confidence. So it's like, do you think it's like best to pick, pick the, you know, and for somebody like a lash artist, Instagram obviously is, is probably the main one, is it? Mm, I, I do definitely believe, yeah, Instagram is the main one. And the thing is that I try to be very good with the both Facebook and Instagram only because I want to target a, an older our audience as well, which not a lot of them actually are on Instagram. So, well, if I yeah. for my client, so I mean, I think that, um, the Facebook is good in that sense for the older generation or the the sometimes the younger generation are a lot more um, prominent on Facebook, but Instagram is definitely brilliant for your for your photos for sure. And then uh, I just have my Facebook. I try just keep those two most kind of active, to be honest. Okay, and yeah, and and have the, the as you said the a website like even if it's only I think. A landing page it, it gives mm -hmm. off the impression of it's, it's more professional yeah yeah definitely okay and then just finally um i know you know you own your own business and you're did you say you recently qualified as a an educator yeah so i got it in july of this year okay so do you think you know do, having both those those strings to your bow or is that going to be a good way for you to, to progress in your own career yeah, definitely. Because I, I even said to um, my employees that I want to focus more on training and I, uh, I want to focus a little bit more on, well, my regulars and then my training and helping people, you know, fall in love with lashes. And I think that I think that it really will help me progress in, in my career because I loved I love talking. I will talk for all day, every day. I just love it. And I love meeting new people. So I also brought in then the online um, course version so that if people weren't able to travel or they're not comfortable going somewhere at the moment with COVID, that they'll have the option to do the online course uh, with myself and um, then also I wanted to basically I said to my employee that I wanted her to have her really, her own clientele and that she will start getting more confident and then in the new year that'll be when I'll kind of hand over a couple to her but then I'll be I'll, I'll obviously be focused on my mega volume and my volume sets um but definitely I want to do more of the training side of things I just I really do enjoy it okay so it's kind of a combo of both going forward yeah yeah definitely definitely Okay, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was really, I, I've been very educated on the whole um, topic of lashes and the, the L, L shapes and the M shapes and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so, a million yeah, for having me. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And to everybody tuned thank in, you. thank you for joining us as well. Um, and we will be back. Uh, keep an eye on our social media. Um, I'm not sure what date we'll be back again with our next webinar but we will keep you all posted. So until then, um, I don't want to say happy Christmas. Yeah, it feels a bit too early. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Bye.